Let's take a look at a simple example of how to map restriction sites on plasmid DNA. As you recall, plasmid is a small circular DNA molecule that's usually found in bacteria and also yeast cells. Restriction enzymes are very unique enzymes that are able to recognize very specific sequences of DNA, and that's where they make the cut. They cleave it. So this is what we call uh, this is why we call these sites restriction sites, and they usually are palindromic sites, meaning they read backward and forward in the same way. So now in this example, what we have here is DNA, plasma DNA was digested by enzyme A, and then in another tube, this plasma DNA was digested by enzyme B. And in the third tube, we have digestion of this plasma DNA by both of the enzymes together. So we call that double digestion. And as you can see, the following fragments resulted from this digestion. So now after the digestion, usually what we would do, we would run gel electrophoresis and we would determine the sizes of these fragments. So we would compare to a ladder or DNA marker and we would determine what our fragments are based on that. So now in this case, this data is already provided to you. So you can see digestion uh, using enzyme A results in a fragment that contains 30 base pairs. Now this is really a small, very small plasmid because this is obviously a hypothetical example. And then we have a fragment that contains 25 base pairs and then a fragment that contains 5. And then we have enzyme B that digested, um, that resulted in digestion of this plasmid and we only have one fragment because there was only one cut. Um, so now what you want to do first, you want to establish how big this plasmid is. So if you look at all of these fragments individually in each tube and add them up, you're going to see that they add, they add up to 60. So it means that's how big this plasmid is. So we get 60 right here and then nothing to add here because we only have one cut and then we get 60 right here. So it means our plasmid is 60 base pairs. That's how big. And then the next thing that you want to do to be able to map these restriction sites is locate an enzyme that results in the highest number of fragments. When this enzyme cleaves the DNA, it gives you the greatest number of fragments. So in this case, you can clearly see it's A, enzyme A, because it gives you three fragments versus B only gives you one. So you want to look at them separately. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and map uh, enzyme A restriction site. And we're going to start at 12 o'clock because this is a circular DNA molecule after all. So this is going to be our first restriction site. And we're going to label as enzyme A here. And then notice we make a fragment that's made up of 30 base pairs. So this is going to be first fragment, 30 base pairs. And then we have to cut the other fragment into 25 and 5. So we're going to place the next restriction site to be here. That's done. That's cleaved by enzyme A. And this is going to be 25 base pairs. And what we're left with is 5 base pairs. So now we mapped enzyme A where it cleaves this particular plasmid, the location. So the next thing that you want to do is look at the double digest because it would be nearly impossible to tell where enzyme B is going to cut at this point because it only cuts once. So we have to look at the double digest and double digest comes from this tube C and you can see we have four fragments that resulted from this digestion. So now what you want to do is figure out which fragments remained intact. After we have added enzyme B, notice which fragments still remain there. So notice we have a fragment that consisted of 25 base pairs. So this is still here. So it means this region was not cut. 
by enzyme B. So we leave that alone. And also, notice we have another fragment that's made up of five base pairs. This region was not cut neither, so we leave that alone as well. So the only fragment that we technically lost is fragment that was made up of 30 base pairs. And notice now instead of having 30, we have 20 and 10. So it means we have to cut that. So we're going to go ahead and cut this fragment. So I'm going to mark this is where enzyme B is going to cut this plasmid. So this fragment is now going to be 20 base pairs. This 30 no longer exists. And then we have 10 base pairs over here. So now could you actually place your um, uh, your restriction site that was done by um, by enzyme B some way here and make that 10 and then the other the other one 20 you actually can however the order that these restriction sites are going to occur on this plasmid is not going to change so that's why you can do it so notice we start at 12 o'clock and we move clockwise so we have restriction site that was done by enzyme a followed by b and this one was a right here and then the last one was also a so a b a a all right so this is how we map restriction sites on plasmid dna